now let me queue up the music real quick all right guys welcome to a uh, wwe podcast we're featuring now payback i am your co-host slash ceo mugen katsuki or as aka ali g as alex would say and we have the other co-ceo co-producer alex alexis aka juggernaut bitch that's right and today, damn that was a good one i like that <laughs> <laughs> I shall guest star at Point, <laughs> Edgy Scopes, Wayland X, R Ad. Uh, don't worry, man, the ad will disappear eventually. Okay, so we're going to talk about the results and our opinions on the matches itself while you guys listen to some cool little jazzy music. So the very first match, which was a randomly thrown match just to compensate for time's sake. So before the main kickoff match, the kickoff first match featured R-Truth versus Stardust. It was, like I said, it was just a filler match just so they could have it. And the winner out of that match was R-Truth. He did end up winning the match. But the match was just like, it felt rushed. You can tell like it was being Throw, rushed. Thrown in at the last minute. Yeah. Exactly. Because I didn't even get to see it as quickly as things disappeared, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I don't have much to say because, like I said, I didn't get to see it because of the length of the match. So Yeah, I mean, the match wasn't really too, how would you say, interesting or wanting, you know, to watch and stuff like that. You want a guest on the show, Edgy Scopes? Is that what you're saying? Let me know. But yeah, like the match to me was just like a filler. It was just like, you know, I guess like, um, what you call that? Like last remnants of their little... Um, Wrestlemania fight that they had for the the championship with uh, yeah, Daniel Bryan and, uh, mm. and all of them. So that mm. to me, that's what it felt like. It was just like a bullshit match. All right. So with that, I guess we'll just skip it because no one really fucking saw it and it was kind of random. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do now, I am going to bring up the next uh, match. And that match, if I could find my folder. It should be the Macho Mandal. Yeah, no, I have it. I'm just trying to bring up the cue card so people can see it. And I do not have that fight card here. Are you kidding me? Oh, you know, I do. Here it goes. Mm -hmm. And the next match that would happen on the actual kickoff show, which is the supposed match, was uh, Macho Mandal and Axomania <laughs> versus The Ascension. <laughs> I have to say, bro... Their gimmick is, is for me, being from the 80s, I love it, bro. M Mandau, really. Macho Mandau, really. You know, uh, I will say that the whole chameleon thing, or the emulator, mm -hmm. as I'm going to call uh, Damian Sandow, I think that works for him. He He's funny, you know? So, I mean, his identity or his uniqueness is the fact that he can copy other people so well, mm -hmm. you know? But, uh, yeah, they were up against the Ascension, and Curtis Axel actually took it to the next level with his attire. Like, he was trying to look more like Hulk Hogan, you know? So, with that, I, I think that uh, Curtis Axel, he was, I, I, he, they're buffing him up to, to do so much more, mm -hmm. being that he was training with The Rock before The Rock had his matches with Cena and what have you. But, you know, the Ascension, they came in there and they performed, you know? It's just, it kind of feels like a letdown because the Ascension, you know, they're throwing them in these matches and they're supposed to be building them up for to be the next big tag team, you know. But the, the in-ring stuff, it was entertaining. You know, it's always fun to see, you know, uh, paying homage to the, the past 80s uh, wrestlers. And what a way to commemorate uh, Randy Savage by having Damian Mandau, mm -hmm. uh, you know, imitate him you know so i think you know uh that it, it was fun to watch i enjoyed that match you know and i even went back to watch it watch it again during the pay-per-view you know on a, another stream but you know i liked it i thought it was cool nelson what do you think um i thought the match was just like it was just a fun match and yeah it really didn't yeah. mean anything too seriously because let's be realistic guys when the ascension was in nxt they were actually legitimately good legitimately good now since they got thrown into wwe's you know Raw and smackdown uh, events they kind of been like clowns maybe because of the writers you uh, know probably because nxt writers are, are different 
You know what I mean? They're more like the ECW, the raw grassroots, you know, like, hey, get in the ring, do your thing type thing. Yeah, but again, like the match, you know, it was cool to see some old, uh, old moves that was done by Macho Man and Hulk Hogan within <laughs> these two wrestlers. Um, uh, you know, Curtis Axel and Damian Sando. That was pretty cool. They came out with their entrance music. They came out with their clothing. Came out with the gold, you know, the yellow beard. Yeah. That was pretty cool. But the Ascension played, like, the role of the heel. And they did took over the match. They did their tag team finisher. So the Fall of Man. Yeah, the, the Fall of Man. All that is is a modified total elimination. Mm -hmm. You know, instead, it's just a chop block and, and you know, eh, I mean, it's 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 cool. I, I, I think that match, again, it was the whole, it encompasses that sports entertainment. You know, they kind of fill that role that, um, uh, you know, freaking, what's his name left? Uh, 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 Mr. Snake. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, you know. Uh, Santino Morella. Mm -hmm. uh, it's late. I'm sorry, guys. But, you know, Santino was funny as hell in the ring. I tell you, that guy, oh, my God. You know, one time when I went to Raw uh, after WrestleMania uh, 29, I think, and I think he got hit, and he turned around, and then he walked out and tagged. You know, he tagged in. He got punched in the face, turned around, tagged himself back out. Everybody was laughing in the arena, you know. So, from time to time, yeah, you have to have those serious matches, but this is definitely, you know, they need to do more of this, and I think this is going to catch on, you know. So, I thought it was fun, uh, and I was randomly kicked. Oh, NG Scoops. Oh, I, I, I don't know what happened. I was just checking the chat, Nelson, but yeah, so I thought it was cool. I mean, again, it was a filler match, but it, it served its purpose. Yeah, it, it did. It did serve its purpose. I don't know if you got kicked, dude, because I, I haven't done anything. No one has done anything. It's probably just like Twitch acting the fuck up. Takuma, you want your supposed money back? What? Free money back? What the heck? Unbelievable. This and cat. Fierce is in here, and he didn't catch the match. Well, it's it's all good. It's all good. All right, so let's move on to the next right, match. Yeah, let me, let me bring up the next slide real quick, guys. Give me a second. The yeah. next match after that, surprisingly, to start off the official payback pay-per-view was Dolph Ziggler versus Sheamus. I have a problem with this match. And express your feelings towards it. Ziggler beat Sheamus in the last match, right? Mm -hmm. Sheamus made Ziggler or buried Ziggler's face in his right ass cheek. And boom. Okay. Now Ziggler gets revenge and, and gets and it was a solid match. Solid match. You know. Uh it was traditional Sheamus, a little more vicious than uh you know obviously he's the heel now, so you, you're gonna see him going in a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Vicious bro kicks here and there. And you know, uh Dolph Ziggler made him kiss his behind. But it just looked like Sheamus was too dominant towards the end. It was almost as as if it demeaned the other match you know what i mean like it should stay close it should stay competitive but sheamus just had him sprawled out in the ring i'm like what the hell you know so it was kind of a bit much it just went from one extreme to the next but uh i, I like to see consistency in the feud you know not like okay um somebody gets the roll up pin on the last pay-per-view and then all of a sudden he gets flat out decked in this pay-per-view like what the hell you know I, I, again, like I said, I want to see consistency and not like, oh, seesaw, you know, make it make those two look like equals. And I think it'll be a better product down the line. So that's all I got on that, on that Nelson. Your thoughts? Okay. Well, I just learned something new in OBS and I will be trying it for future podcasts. But my thoughts about this match, it was actually a pretty good match, though. Yeah, Sheamus did win. It, was, it seemed like it was an actual effort. Sheamus didn't really resort to cheating. Mm -hmm. that that much or cheating at all within the match and i thought it was pretty good because like i told you before in the offline there's a lot of wrestlers that will push the other ones to make them perform better yeah and Dolph ziggler yeah. is one of those guys yeah and he basically made the match more filling and more like oh shit like he kicked out He's bleeding. He headbutted, dude, for Christ's sake. Hey, he got stitches. At, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm, so. I saw them on the Instagram. They had to stitch his fucking forehead. 
I'm like, oh boy. Yeah, Takuma said that Chim um, Dolph got his his arse kicked, and uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He got he got Rick rolled. I'm like, damn. Yeah, he got he got hurt pretty bad. But again, Sheamus is like the the heel as when he first entered into the WWE. That, that's Which was, was, was it was it's better for him. It's, yeah. I think he's more successful as a heel than he is a face. You know, but when he's a face, he's funny. Yes. You know. Uh, yes. Is I like fella and all these jokes and all that you know. So uh, I, I think again they gotta make it consistent. But yeah, mm -hmm. it's very true. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, it was a good match though. I, I will say it, it was, but I honestly think that they need to make this rivalry much more intensified. Like make it into a stronger match build up. You know what I'm saying? Like instead of like the the kiss me arse match, how about you making like a last man standing match or uh, 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 they, they have potential to do that. I yes. mean because the the uh, you know the feud is fairly new. Mm -hmm. They only got two matches in the shoot, but I remember Hulk Hogan and uh, a couple other old timers said that back in the day, the Ultimate Warrior days, Papa Shango, you know Jake the Snake, Robert days, feuds lasted longer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But then, you know, we did have a different uh, medium where they had to actually go to the events and once a month see a pay-per-view on TV. So, yeah, they had to spread that out. But now, the fuse turn around so quickly. It's like, okay, you know, like look at Bray Wyatt. He was messing with Undertaker. Now, he's messing with Ryback. And then before that, messing with other, you know, is it, it, yeah, the feuds need more time and care. Like, you got to make people want to see the heel go down. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's something that the writers need to look at. And I know Triple H and the rest of the uh, crew, like, it's they, they really need these stories. They got to move on to the next episode. But, yeah, take your time. Do like the animes do. You know, not like, like Dragon Ball and how Dragon Ball, like, you have 40-something episodes starting by charging up. Ah, like, you know, don't do it like that. But, you know, flesh them out a little more. Make people care for that feud. Yes, you know? yes. And, and, and I think that uh, it'll work itself out. Definitely. All right. So let me change the slides while you read the chat if you would like. All I right. So I, I see Ziggler. What was that? Ziggler used every ounce of energy he had. It was good. Yeah, Edgy. Edgy, yeah. He, 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 again, Ziggler, Daniel Bryant, now the Adrian Nevels. They, they, they give it their all when they're in that ring, you know. And it's a pleasure to watch them. And I can't wait till the Lucha Dragons and then little little Lucha Dragon gets the uh, tag team belts because I love to see that high flying, high pace, high effort in the ring. I know that's a difficult pace to sustain without you know getting injured. Look at like Edge and Christian and and the Hardy Boys, all those from that era. Where they were doing craziness, you know, like yeah, it's just something I like to see that more. But realistically, it takes a toll on their body. So what? It, it is what it is. Yeah. All right. I'm a, I'm not pretty sure if this was the next match or not, but we'll still talk about it because I'm trying to remember from memory. The next match that I remember. I have a problem with this one too. With Ryback versus um, Bray Wyatt. Wyatt. I mean, you, you could go first, Nelson, on this one. Okay. Um, how can I put this? This was a very interesting build-up because Ryback is actually a really good, formidable wrestler, and so was Bray Wyatt, along with his mic skills. So the the, the build-up was always good. The, my issue is is that it ended so quickly. The mm -hmm. match didn't really draw out as it should have had, and mm -hmm. Ryback didn't. To me, he didn't look like he put any effort at all. It felt like it was so one-sided that Bray Wyatt just... Sister Abigail clocked them out and the match was over. And then this was started the trend with... When we explained the other matches, this started the trend of, like, the heels winning continuously back-to-back. Back. Mm hmm Yeah, and you know the thing with this... I know it's, it's story-based, but look at Ryback. Physically look at Ryback. And look at Bray Wyatt. If they were to let them cut loose... Do you think Bray Wyatt will win? <laughs> I mean, like, you gotta make this shit believable. Like, come on. Like, okay, I was, I'm was, i still mad at the Undertaker, Brock Lesnar streak thing, but who else was gonna do it? You know what I mean? If you really think about it, you gotta make it where if you're selling the product of this story that, oh, okay, I can see that, that guy losing. I understand. Mm -hmm. You know? But 
Yeah, Bray Wyatt, like, it looked like he ate him up <laughs> towards the end of that match. And it's just, okay, he's the face of fear. And the one thing with Bray Wyatt, they're trying to keep him strong after the loss to Undertaker. You know, mm-hmm. so they they don't want him. They're building him up, in essence. They're building him up. He's going to be that Mankind, Undertaker type character to usher in the new era. You know, hell, look at his intro when he's coming in with the blue lights and everybody doing like how they used to do for Undertaker, you know? Mm -hmm. So you want that character to remain strong, but I don't think Ryback should have been the one because both of them are young and they're trying to, you know, make their way up. And and Ryback was on a killer momentum wave up until he fought CM Punk for the championship. And then got, you know, after he lost to CM Punk or his undefeated thing got messed up, what happened? Ryback's home and all this other dumb shit. And Ryback didn't really find his niche. And then he had to just disappear for a while, come back, just so that the people can chant, feed me more once more. You know, so I think that what they need to do is be careful who they're pitting against each other so soon. Ryback, man, he's fallen from grace. And... It's like he's on the down swivel, and then you got Ray, Bray Wyatt, who's white hot, moving on the way up. Mm-hmm. You know? So I think the in-ring uh, performance should have been more leveled. Again, same thing like I was saying with the, the other match with uh, Ziggler and Sheamus. Make it look a little closer. I know Ziggler put more effort, but it's like it's like right back, like you said, right back didn't seem to do much yeah he didn't so. I, I honestly felt like he was holding back so much because he can lift up Bray Wyatt with ease he can throw him like a rag doll with ease if he truly wanted to it's just mm-hmm. I, I don't know if they're starting to make it seem like Bray Wyatt is like now the mental wrestler and to like easily like mind fuck the opponent and so he can beat them now like mm. I, I don't I don't know because it, I think it, it, it's it's like uh, you know it was an unofficial passing of the torch from Undertaker the the you know the phenom into Bray Wyatt which mm. is this this dark ominous character but in his own spin you mm. know so yeah if he's using mind games to get people is working you know according it is, to the story yeah. so I, I, again I would wanted to see right back. Uh, really like getting them down to 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 a desperate state and then i would have believed i would have uh bought it more where um bray wyatt cheated or used his mind games in the ring to win because this is the same ryback that freaking um went up against cm punk as uh john cena and all that and you had bray wyatt just outright beat him what if cm punk was still around and then he went up against bray wyatt you know what I mean? Like, now, all these people will chant CM Punk all fucking day. You know what I mean? And, and Bray Wyatt's on the come up. Uh, uh, what, you're gonna boo Bray Wyatt now? All of a sudden, like, they're trying to do the reins and somebody on the way up. It's just... It, 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 again, it has to... There has to be a level of consistency. That is very true. Yeah. But, again, Bray Wyatt did end the match and the result of using the sister Abigail... And a couple of people within the chat was saying that uh, he should have used Ultra too. What the hell, Tenkuma? And then um, Edgy <laughs> Scope says that he lost interest halfway in the match. And he said it's such a weird rivalry in his opinion. And then Takuma said, I ran out to get a sandwich during the match. And when I came back, it was all over. Yeah, it was kind of weird. But... It was a weird It was a weird match, mind you guys. We did watch these. It's just like, it's kind of hard to remember when you've seen better matches in the progression of the pay-per-view. And you just kind of, you kind of lose slight interest. You're like, uh, really? Did this happen just now? Like, Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, but we'll queue up the next match just to keep the ball rolling. And, okay, now I'll put this match up because I think this might have came after. The Tag Team Championship match between The New Day versus Tyson Kidd and Cesaro. I honestly have to give it up for Tyson Kidd and fucking Cesaro. They're using their NXT move list and they going in. Yes. 
Why did Cesaro do a Psycho Crusher style European uppercut? I was like, he was holding back for two seconds, four back, four, and all three punches, and he came, boom, just connected with that Euro uppercut, man. Oh, man, the, the athleticism, the display, Tyson Kidd <laughs> and, and, and Cesaro was, was, was stellar, man. And, you know, I think that now, I hope Vince, he said that, you know, those two lacked charisma, they lacked it. They got it in the ring, oh, whatever yeah. that it is that he's looking for. But damn, though, they really put on a show, you know. <laughs> and uh, th this whole thing with the New Day, which is, you know, technically they're unofficial heels, but they're still trying to be like positive and da da da. And you know the way that they cheated to win. Okay, who was who, who won? Who initially won the tag titles? Was it Big E and and Kofi? Or is it uh, uh, Woods and, 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 and Kofi? Like, you know, they keep switching it around and they're pulling some Bella or Twin Magic bullshit. And, you know, the pinfall, it wasn't even a legal man making the pin. That, that shouldn't have been, been an official victory. But now, the New Day, and I'll wait till Nelson says his piece, they're going to get theirs at Elimination Chamber. But I, I think that, you know, I want to see... Uh, Tyson Kidd and Cesaro get the titles back mm -hmm. but we'll, we'll see but it's good because they're in the same position like Roman Reigns they're back in the hunt like you know you gotta make the fans want to see them get it and like man how come they keep getting screwed you know and by the time they get it is that 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 big reward that pay they pay look no, yeah, so. it, it, it's uh, what like what um, Edgy Skos and Sakuma said. The match was very solid. Fear said the same exact thing. I just feel, again, Cesaro and Tyson Kidd pushed the match so much. Kofi yeah. Kingston. By the crowd was into it too. Yes, bro. the crowd was into it. My, in my opinion, Kofi Kingston is a very good performer, but he's not good with a tag team. That's just my yeah, he, opinion. Yeah, they need to break him off from the, this New Day nonsense. Right. Xavier Woods, I haven't seen anything on his background prior before WWE, so I would just say he's irrelevant for now. Mm -hmm. And Big E was, if I remember at the time, John Cena's trainer before he got introduced into the WWE. Mm. And now... Yeah, because they used to lift together. Uh, yeah, they so. used to lift together. That's correct. And now Big E is just like a, a fucking muscle-bound preacher. Like... Really? Yo, he's like a big noob. <laughs> <laughs> he's a big noob. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, man. Like, come on, man. man. But again, Tyson Kidd and Cesaro pulled off some crazy athleticism. Even when Cesaro was going from ring post to ring post to ring post, uppercutting Kofi Kingston like a fucking rag doll. And then at the end, he did like some mega psycho crusher ass yeah, European yeah. uppercut and he bopped them to the corner. And then the, the fucked up thing is, even though he did botch this, the strength of Cesaro when he was trying to do a double um, gut wrench power bomb to Big E, that oh my dude God, is this. strong as fuck. Yes, yes. For his size, mm -hmm. you know, like, I want to see him and Ryback have a little rivalry. They did that's, that's... once upon a time when uh, he was a Paul Heyman guy. Uh-huh. They, they did have a little, like, feuding and stuff like that. But I honestly think if they give Cesaro his real push to become, like, a champion, oh, shit, it will get real. Yeah. Like, that dude has talent. Yeah, but the talent alone, again, they have to have that perfect mix. Like Seth Rollins has that mix. Like he's good on the mic, but honestly, no one is, is as good on the mic like The Rock, CM Punk, and the list goes on. But you got to be able to do it on the mic and in the ring, you know, mm -hmm. so that's just something that I know if that's what Vince McMahon was saying about Cesaro, not having it like let him work on his mic skills and roman reigns has come a long way you know his mic skills like, ooh, 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 ooh. like okay you know if he could develop that i think that they're going they will use him they will use him yeah you know, definitely so. but i hope cesaro and tyson kick comes back very strong let's let's see what we have here in the chat weak on outside strong on inside yeah 
No, that's kind of true. I mean, his appearance, Cesaro doesn't really look like he can do much in a sense, but when that man lifts up an opponent that's twice his fucking size, he shocks people. Like, I, yeah. I am sheerly amazed by When he did that, uh, uh, the giant swing to, um... Kali, I was like, oh Yeah, my that God, scared man. the shit out of me. I did not understand how the hell he lifted up 400 pounds like that. That yeah. scared the shit out of me. And, and Kali let him do it. Mm. He let him do it. Unbelievable. Yeah. Right? Let's you know, see. I'll, I'll beat his uh, ass. <laughs> big Shoes lost with CM Punk. Okay, I don't know what the heck that's supposed to mean, though, but... I guess he's trying to say, like, you know, trying to take his rightful place as, like, a competitor. I don't know if that's what you meant, edgy scopes. But overall, the match was pretty good. Like, it was a pretty solid tag team match. Yeah. All right, let's go to it, it was a lot of action going on in that match. I, I was yes, very... yes, yes, okay. yes. Yes, it was. All right, so, now the right. next one, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is John Cena versus Rusev in an I Quit match for the U.S. Championship. <sighs> I don't know. I, I'm going to say I was kind of off by it, oh. but but it's a, it was better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, and I say that to say this, considering how, you know, stiff and heavy Cena looks in the ring, I think Rusev carried it in such a way where it worked. Mm -hmm. I think the match worked better than the previous two. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a little more excitement in there. Um, I, I think that there was you, you felt the sense of drama, the struggle, the story throughout the, that match. And with that too, I mean, Cena, again, you know, went into that Super Cena mode. But it wasn't a super dominant thing. He had an opponent, a foe. That was willing to go to the bitter end, according to the story. He Rusev was not going to go down without a fight. Now, my prediction for that match, I thought Rusev was going to win. Yeah. But, but, yeah. but, like, because, you know, I was thinking that they were going to use this to start segue, um, do to start the segue to get Cena out of the title scene and have him go to the twilight of his career. But, with how that went down, even though Rusev was unsuccessful in winning, and I'll let Nelson explain how Cena won, but it's more or less like, okay, Rusev still can be utilized as that monster bulldozing heel that the WWE needs on a consistent basis since Brock Lesnar is not always around, you know? But he still looks strong, and I think that it, uh, this doesn't hurt Rusev any because the bigger picture, you know, the U.S. title, maybe now he can go for the IC title and then later on for the U the world title. You know, so um, I think it, it, it ended the best possible scenario for him. And considering that Cena is the face of the company, you don't want to have him on a total skid. Because, what? hey, you know what? You want those kids still buying shirts. You want the people outside and the charities and all that uh, stuff outside of the ring. You know, you want him like, oh, man, you know, you can't walk up and like, you lost to Rusev? Really? Like, you, you got you to gotta keep your, your assets looking strong. But I think that the match was better than the last two matches. And, again, I'm going to let Nelson uh, go into the details as to how Cena won. Okay, uh, I'll read some chat stuff right now. Um, the, uh, Edgy Scope says that the match was 50-50. Takuma yes. says that yeah. he's glad that he won. He does hope that Cena does stop the open challenge matches for his title. He's going to lose it. You know what? I, I see Cena losing the title the open challenge to probably like an NXT guy or something. That, that would be freaking, cool. That yeah. would be cool. You know, uh, paying it for it. He would do it too. He yeah. would job to, and you know what? He's a class act. As much as the fans hate him, they, you, they, you gotta understand that that man will do the right thing for business. Mm -hmm. you know, so yeah, he would. 
Edgy Scope says that it had my attention at times, but not the whole time. Super Cena. Then Fierce commented saying that these guys face each other a whole lot now. It was the best match that they had from the previous two with each other. And mm. basically, they had a lot of time working with each other to actually get used to, you know, how yeah, the Yeah, they did work. look smoother. The, the chemistry got better in this third match than the past two. Right. No, so. Then the last comment before I start my thing is, I knew Cena uh, would win... Because he hasn't lost an I quit match ever since he's been doing this. Yeah, that's kind of true. I haven't seen him lose an I quit match yet. Look at his gimmick. Never give up. Hustle to it. Loyalty, respect. You know. Mm -hmm. how, how are you going to have him quit? And then that would destroy his gimmick. Yeah, it actually would. And it wouldn't make any sense. But Cena, I have to say, despite the shit that he's been going through in that match. I mean, he got thrown into a steel... A uh, barricade and the shit bent in bent, half. Yeah. Oh wow. I was like, what the heck? And they're like, this is awesome. Yeah. You know? He got bent in half. Rusev got thrown on the pyro and he actually injured his right shoulder mm. from the explosion. Cena fucking try to be funny. That shit was funny to me. Looked like he was typing an email on the iBook. And he closed the lid and then he fucking hit Rusev over the head <laughs> with it. <laughs> that, that was pretty funny to me. There was some entertainment within a serious match. That was good. It I, I like that. And I liked it the fact that how uh, Rusev was like, if you don't say I quit, I'm going to ram you through the, ch through the steel steps. And Cena threatened him with the same way, but he went through the barricade. Mm, with the, mm. it was a lot of back and forth going on yeah i mean rusev speared cena through like a table outside mm -hmm. it was like it was crazy man it i i think that it, it was a good match it, 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 it was solid it, it was, was solid. a very great match what's up the rock two two three four three what's going on but i just felt like they should have not had lana been in control of making the decision for Rusev. No, no, I think that... I think that she just well, the story is written so that she can interject because I don't think that you know if, if you think about it, I it, we don't speak Russian, mm -hmm. you know, we don't know what Rusev was really saying, you know, and I think that they're gonna use that angle to say, hey, he didn't really quit. Lana didn't want to see him get hurt, and she jumped in there and said, okay, he quit, he quit. You know, to protect them. Yeah, that, that's what it seemed like she did. But again, Rusev was just rambling. And like, I, I'm just going to throw some words in there. I'm not saying I know Russian. I'm just going to throw my opinion wording of what he might have said. He probably was saying like, no, I will never give up. I will never lose to John Cena. I will not lose this opportunity. You know, but like, you know, why would he say it in in Russian? That that's well. That, the thing is, if he you did notice, that to himself, he deserves to lose that. If you if you have noticed, he's been saying no in Russian throughout almost the entire match, and he would like yell it loud in pure English when he's like enraged. But he, every time when he said no, he would say it in Russian. So it just felt like his character is in that state where he doesn't really like to speak English too much, and he just speaks in Russian. But when he gets his paychecks, guess what? They're in English, right? They're yeah, English. they are in English. I mean, he does. Adapter know died. Don't do it like Nintendo. Yeah, yeah. but I, I just don't like the the gimmick that not once, not twice, but three times Rusev has blamed Lana for the fact that he lost all his matches against Cena. Well, Daniel Bryan was blame, blaming AJ back in the day. Well, that's yeah. when fucking Bryan was a heel. Well, uh, yeah. Well, Rusev's a heel, so it, it's what it is. But. Yeah, it was a very good powerhouse match between them two. And the third and last match of what, what they say it is, this was like the best of the series. I yes. Say. Yeah, they, uh, they did really good. And you know what? Overall, as a whole, um, Payback was not a bad pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. It was not a bad pay-per-view. And... I say that because of the main event, but we'll get to that when the time yeah. comes. I'm going to load up the next match now. And the next match, of course, this is what we call a filler match because it sounds more of relevance. And that is the Divas tag team match between the Bella Twins versus Naomi and Tamina Snuka. You know what? Naomi, she, she got it in the ring, bro. She, she, can, she can go. Yeah. She can go and you know to think that you know when she says that she's the most talented right now I believe her mm -hmm. I believe her I'm like hell that shining wizard kick that she did to freaking uh, um, Brie Bella 
uh, when, when Tamina came out, I'm like, oh my god, that looked like a dead or alive kick. Like, oh man, they they got it. And Tamina snooker with them super kicks, man. Oh my god, had um, you know, Brie. Uh, I, I think she was on the ring apron, and then Tamina just came out like she said some sweet chin music. Mm. Yeah. Kicked her right in the mouth. I'm like, hold That's, on, what the heck? Yo, but, that that match was very interesting. I mean, yeah, it's the women's division, but I'm just saying this as in my opinion. NXT has the better Divas roster right now when it comes to talent. Not when is Ric Flair's daughter coming up? I honestly, she should have been dropped already as um, you know, getting her thing pushed. But I still think that they're keeping her around a bit longer because she still has the hype built up on NXT, mm. and there's not many Divas to begin with. And you know what? Place. We know we know that it's gonna be sucky for her under the shadow of her her father. But it, it will work for her because when she had that one match on Raw, mm-hmm. man, the crowd was behind her, bro. Like they need to turn, turn the gun loose on uh, and, and let let her fly, and 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 buff up the Divas division. Yeah, you know? but there's not much women like how there was back in like the Attitude Era. Attitude Era was just a fucking flock of divas. I mean, you had Jacqueline, you had mm. fucking Trish Stratus, you had fucking Sable, you had Lita, you had fucking um. Tori Wilson, you mm, mm. had all these people. You, um, Candice Michelle, you, the other girl that was with um Eminem at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, you had so many women. Molly Holly. Oh my God, the list goes on. Yep, yep, yep. And I mean, it, 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 it's just you know, they should just pay the same TLC that Triple H gave to the tag team division and said, mm-hmm. "Wait, we need to bring prestige back to it." Stephanie should. I think, just my opinion, I think as a woman, uh, and, and, you know, understanding like, hey, empowerment, you know what I mean? Buff up that division. Bring up some of the NXT people. And, and let's make this thing happen. Because all I see are good things coming. And you can get that same buzz like the Alundra Blaze era, the Trish Stratus and Lita. You know what I mean? It's just that they're not giving them enough Time. I don't know what is this budget constraints or you, they have to uh, you know organizations NXT and you have the developmental group down in Florida and then I mean come on like make it happen make it happen it just takes effort you know and and the and the right writers give them the same type of storylines that you give the men you know get have the divas title like right before like a, a, a main event or championship match. You know what I mean? Not a- after like a U.S. title, but mm-hmm. it's it's just because the way Naomi was performing tonight, and it it was it was great. I I I think that we're gonna see the strap on her in the near future. Yeah, but I just hope they do really well when it comes to the Divas Division because it can definitely have some potential in the match. But again, like I I don't want to be like an ass, but Nikki Bella is just full of tits. Brie is just what's wrong with that? That means she can't do shit. What? That means that she has to get help from the other div- uh, divas to give her her push as a champion. That's why she has the title, I think. <laughs> yeah, in <laughs> my it. opinion. And then her sister is like the fucking punching bag. She got her ass handed to her by Tamina. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, Remember yeah. that super kick she did over, over the top? Rope? That's what I was talking about. Oh. I'm like, oh my gosh. It, it wasn't once, but twice. Like, yeah. ugh. In my yep. opinion, that match was very one-sided because Naomi yeah, they were and dominant. Tamina know how to fight. And that scares okay. the shit out of me because... But, you know, the Bellas are, are well-trained as well. You know, yeah. but you could see that they have... There's more natural ability from, you know, Tamina and uh, Naomi. Yeah. You know? it was... It's almost like with the Bellas, it's like it's trained, it's textbook. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very rigid. But then when you got the natural swag... Of the other two, it's like, okay, it, it definitely showed in that match. Yeah, all right, now the next one before the main event, which I felt so disrespected on, was, oh my god, King Baudet versus Neville. Oh man, that freaking match. Man, let me tell you something. Neville, I'm on the Neville train. You know, if, if he's going through space, and, and freaking going all over the, 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 the galaxy because gravity can't hold them. Yo, I'm going to be on that train because 
This guy is going to be a major player in the future. King Barrett comes out there. It's an interesting feud. You know, they're doing their thing. Adrian Neville wins the match, but not in the manner that he would have liked. Correct. But it's like, you know, the, the, I, I, what, what can I say more than those of you who watch an Adrian Neville match know what you're getting. Mm-hmm. And imagine if with, with his athleticism and how he the, all that aerial stuff and, and he just he, he flows you know what i mean imagine one day when he gets his wrestlemania moment that guy is gonna freaking go to the freaking moon bro mm-hmm. you know but i think that uh it, this this match ended the way that it needed to because now it's gonna make it he's still in the hunt he, he's gonna want to beat barrett legitimately yes. not like so, uh, by pinfall, submission, and whatnot. But what Barrett ends up doing, he counts himself out, and he's sitting there trolling, ha ha ha, doing like the Floyd Mayweather memes and whatnot. And then comes back in the ring after he gets himself counted out. Adrian Neville's back is turned to start beating him up. Why did you do that while you were in in, in the match? Like because he couldn't do it legitimately. <laughs> That's why they got to All be right. a bitch. Yeah, so I've been turned to Florida Nelson on that one. But yeah. Adrian Neville, man, that's my dude right there. He's going to be good stuff. Yeah, he Adrian Neville definitely has earned my respect of what true wrestling should be done as of right now on the main roster. And the fact that King Barrett got out the match just to self Nelson, I, hold on one second. Why do you have Wade Barrett's face? trolling with that scepter like that well that was the the match card that they had <laughs> on the official site i don't know unbelievable That's how they had it all right all and right. you know it was going to be a good match because again neville brings the best ability out in wrestlers and he's very athletic the only thing i didn't like about the match and i don't know if you guys caught it adrian neville had his very first botch move what the, 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 match. The, the thing when he tried to spring himself off the turnbuckle and he <clears> fell <throat> and then he tried to springboard back into Barrett and that's when he whacked him out of midair. Yeah, and he you know what? With his, with his style, it's high risk, high reward. So you, you're going to, unless he's perfect every night. He was off that it, night because remember his knee was fucked up too. Yeah, from the German suplex. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think that when he went for that full arc, and he, when he was coming back down, his his foot didn't come out. You know what I mean? Because when I used to do freestyle wrestling and, and judo, hell, I can do that. And when you do it and you're bringing them back, you, you scoot your hips under their hips. And then you bring them back. You arch or you go into a high bridge. And when you're coming out of it, you have to kick your feet out. I think his foot or the ball of his foot got stuck. And his right knee looked like he tweaked it and whatnot. And I was like, oh, it's too soon for him to be getting hurt. We already lost Daniel Bryant for, you know, an undisclosed amount of time. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to stay healthy, you know what I mean? So, but, yeah, that that, that, that was another botch. But that's it's it's the nature of his style, you know. So he just has to make sure he stays healthy and not take a necessary risk if he doesn't have to. Yeah, you know? very true. And I just want him to just get his opportunities because I honestly think for a guy who's 28 years old, he has a lot of fucking potential. I mm-hmm. mean, that's some scary shit. The dude is only about 5'10 and a half, 28 years old. And and his physique is like, it's outstanding. Like, he takes care of himself just like uh, uh, John Morrison when he was still in yeah, WWE. Yeah. Dudes were fucking crazy. Crazy now you know what I, I made a joke that uh, Adrian Neville looks like the main character from uh, Golden Axe, Kane Blade. I'm you know. fucking done. Oh my he does. It, it, Nelson, Nelson, really? Do, he, do you want me to pull up a picture of the fucking character in the game and put a side by side comparison to him? We'll, we'll, we'll do that on the podcast. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, but yeah, that, that's why I'm like, hey, he, he looked like a heroic character right there. So. As long as he stays healthy, though, that, that's the most important thing. Yeah, definitely, but to me, I thought the match could have been better if Barry didn't be a bitch. Yeah, but Neville made it look good. He made it look good, you know. All right, guys, we're of course you guys already know what it is, but we're gonna roll into the final fight card of the pay per view, which was the Fatal Four Way between Dean Ambrose, Randy Orton, Seth Rollins, and Roman Reigns. I'm going to go off and say this exceeded my expectations. This 
was awesome. Bravo WWE. This match was the shit. It was mayhem, craziness, interference, you name it. A temporary, uh, 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 you know, brotherhood link up with, with, you know, man, the crowd was eating it up. The shield came together for a, a brief second, triple power bomb to freaking Randy Orton, Kane, and, you know, there were some funny moments in it, but it was like Ultimate Marvel versus Capcom 3 because it was just a lot happening in that match. A lot happening. And despite. Dean Ambrose and uh, Roman Reigns having to fight each other, there's still that brotherhood ship. And you saw that. You know what I mean? And it's like, hey, we gotta do what we gotta do, right? Once they cleaned everything up, it was it was it was a mayhem, man. I love that. Everything was done right. I I you know, I'm not gonna give the, the ending. I'm gonna let Nelson do that, but it ended the way that it needed to. But I'm still mad at what was used to win that Mm -hmm. match. I'm still tight. I'm like, what the heck? And then somebody had the nerve to show their face at the end holding his hand up. I'm like, okay, got it. But with that, well done. Very entertaining. It had all the the makings for a good Fatal 4-Way, which I now found out is when you have a Fatal 4-Way, there's no disqualification, according to the announce table. Mm-hmm. When did they start changing this? Like, I, I thought it was just a regular thing. Well, anything that happens between a triple threat match and onward, that like Fatal 4-Way and whatnot, is no longer pertain to outside the interferences and losing the match no more. I don't know but how long ago they've done this. But... They, that's a bad idea because Seth Rollins had Kane, uh, a J&J security, so technically... It was a seven-man match mm-hmm. because yes, was. everybody was in the, in, in, in the match, in the ring. Nobody could stop it. Nope. You know, freaking Jamie Noble jumps off the top rope, RKO. Mercury, RKO. Kane, oh, what was that? Dean Ambrose, Irish whipped them and ran into Kane, Psh, RKO. Like, it was just RKOs for days, Superman punches for days. It was it was great. It was, it was just chaotic, and I love that kind of stuff because you, I was sitting here like Nelson – while we're watching, I was like, "Oh, oh, oh, oh!" It was just like, it was like fireworks. It was very yeah, well done. Yeah, you was very excited with everything that was going down. I mean, let's talk about a little bit of like the crazy hype moments of the match. I saw like, like probably maybe half from the half point to the end. Did did we just see the last thirty seconds of the Shield re- reuniting to do a triple fucking power bombs on Randy Orton? Yeah, and, and remember the crowd like this is awesome. Yeah. Oh my god, that was freaking awesome, WWE. That was great. And then that they was played. Great. Then they played that. Oh yeah, you know, let's stick all our hands, shit or whatever. Blah blah blah. And then they looked at him and started laughing. And then they was like, uh uh-uh. uh. And they just decked him. And then they- that was Nelson. <laughs> they that was like the highlight, bro. That that made the pay per view for me. That was crazy. And then on top of that, they freaking threw Seth Rollins on the, the table. And then they freaking, not once, but twice threw Kane on the fucking table until it cracked. Yeah, matter of fact, the way that went down, Rollins got uh, power bombed, mm-hmm. Or they did the 2.0 version where it's just um, Ambrose and, and Reigns. Then Kane, he got some. And then the crowd was like, one more time, like ECW. They're mm-hmm. like, one more time. So when they did the double power bomb on, on Kane, he finally went through. And Seth Rollins was underneath him. <laughs> that yeah. was great. That was great, it man. Was I just, loved it. It was just crazy. And then the fact that how when Dean Ambrose and uh, Roman Reigns was fighting in the in the ring, it was a pretty good back and forth thing because, mind you, they have a lot of chemistry It was together. solid. It was solid. Dean Ambrose and, and, and Roman Reigns yeah. it, it, the countering their moves. and it, That was a good exchange. And that should, you know, silence some of the critics for Roman Reigns. You put him with the right person, hey, he's going to shine, you know. And that, that speaks volumes of Dean Ambrose because he has... A bright future going forward. Yeah, definitely. And remember, like it, it got even crazier when uh, Roman Reigns hit Dean Ambrose with a move, and then he went for the pin count. He's like, "Oh yeah!" So he picked his ass back up, still held him, and then flatlined him with a fucking power bomb on top of that. I'm like, "Oh yeah, the single leg power yeah. bomb." Oh I'm like, dude. Yeah, and he it was that uh, he picked him up, or I think yeah he had him on the ground, mm-hmm. picked him up, 
And it wasn't just a power bomb; it was a sit-out power bomb, yeah. like a modified Tiger Driver type shit. And I was like, okay, that's cool, you know. Going, I mean, and, and I wasn't expecting that from Roman Reigns, you know what I mean? So he's not like, uh, uh, how can I say, <laughs> lacking in the move repertoire department. But I can definitely see some uh, growth and development. You know, uh, in the next few years. Yeah, and I just again the match was crazy, and then again right after that happened, what Randy Orton comes in and the dude's on fucking fire. RK oh my god! Every goddamn body. <laughs> and and then then was that uh, he what three RKO's and then uh, the, the spike the quick, DDT, the spike DDT, and the quick uh, um uh, capture out of the air power slam. That he did as well. Oh, and, and Seth Rollins had that uh, scouted because he was trying to c- grab him, and he countered mm-hmm. by holding the ropes. And then he, it, it, it was just great that the exchange and everything was well done, yeah. and excellent. And to excellent me, in people. my honest opinion, the match should have went a teensy bit longer, probably like an extra five minutes, just to see if like Dean Ambrose could do some tr- bullshit trickery. But the thing that kind of left a little eerie taste in my mouth. Is that Seth Rollins can't do the curb stop no more due to personal legal issues of the WWE. So what does he do instead? He takes fucking Triple H's finisher and does the goddamn pedigree. And and, and pins Randy Orton. Yeah, flat, clean, no kick out from anyone else. Because supposedly Kane and J&J security was fucking up both uh, Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose outside of the ring. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, that needs to stop, man. That, that's... Uh, that that needs to stop, you know. But I will say, as much uh, uh, that was just well done. Now I'm looking at the chat. Manny Davis, 1987. Um, I did not know they had a 60-minute dark match. Him and CM Punk. So, I mean, I I, I hope somebody recorded it. And if there's it's on some... YouTube, it's on YouTube. Okay, that, that's how he saw it. It, it, I will be checking that out. All right, so then, let's uh, read some of these comments here, guys, because I know there's a lot of you here that I didn't miss the comments from. So let's, oh, let's I, I wanted to respond to fears. Go ahead. Like Randy Orton has been doing the T-bone um, suplex, and he used the exploder suplex. Um, uh, who was that from Japan who was using that? Yeah, he was using the exploder suplex. So I'm like, I'm seeing Randy Orton become a little more technical and adding more moves to his. Uh, um, you know, loadout, which is, I think, is a good thing. You know, you you never want to see the wrestler stay stagnant. The one wrestler that was able to transcend time and evolve was the Undertaker. Mm-hmm. Man, let me tell you, the Undertaker from the cryptic, you know, a uh, Paul Bear type to the the American Badass to the the hybrid, all the and Hell's Gate. Last ride, you know, he didn't just stay with the tombstone. So when you see people evolving, that's always a wonderful thing to see. And a slow incremental evolution is always good because when they do something new, like Cena with the new Springboard Stunner he's been using, people are like, oh shit, like, what's, what's that? You know, if they do it right, I think it's going to be cool. Yeah, also. definitely. But I also think that, like, Within these matches, hopefully they are learning like what did the fans react to, how did they react to them, try, I mean, don't make every fucking match like that, but put shit that people want to see and what they expect from these wrestlers and keep it rolling, like, this pay-per-view is a perfect example of how regular matches should come out every night with this much anticipation, this much excitement, this much crowd-pleasing. Mm-hmm. Like that's what that to me. That's why I watch NXT a lot more, and mm-hmm. especially now with the recent announcement that Samoa Joe is appearing on NXT this Wednesday. What? Watching that shit. Watching that shit. Yes, yes, Let's yes, yes. Uh, Manny Davis, 1987. Yeah, he was wishing for Brock Lesnar to come out and fuck everybody up. I th- I thought, thought that was gonna happen. Out of suspension. Yeah, I thought Brock was gonna pop up, but I think. They need to keep the title off of Brock because uh, you, you won't be able to beat him clean mm-hmm. with, with the way that they crafted his character. So keep the title off of him. Let him be that guy who came in. That The Brock Lesnar that went in F5, Michael Cole and, and the cameraman two times and all that. Let Brock come in like a hurricane, you know, and people don't know like his move is the F5, which is a Vegeta or a violent storm. That's his translation. 
You know, let him come in through like a, that violent storm and, and leave destruction in his wake and leave. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that uh, that that's what they should do with Brock Lesnar, but we'll see. We'll see. I would like to see a rematch with him and Roman Reigns because that whole history with how The Rock got beat and never got the the rematch and whatnot. They were going in a good direction with it. It was just it was too soon. You know, let's see if if next WrestleMania we don't. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Not sure. Um, let's see what else is there. I see uh, King Game. King Games, really? <laughs> I just got that uh, in the chat. Yeah, they, they cheat and all that. Yeah, it, it is what it is. You know. Interesting. I didn't know I can do that. Let me test that out. But yeah, let me see what some other questions here because I, I did miss a lot of questions here, guys, and I do apologize for that. Mm-hmm. So let's. Yeah, we're gonna only hit a few uh, due to the fact that I have to be at work tomorrow morning. I need to at least yeah. get seven hours sleep. So uh, apparently, someone got excited because of the whole shield thing that happened in thirty seconds. That was great. <laughs> Love. Um, the Divas Division is slowly coming back together. Uh, Edgy Scope says that he smells a cage match with um. Well, first uh, to keep Seth Rollins from running. Yeah. Or not. Um, let's see. Or, or or was that for the Barrett thing so that he doesn't run well, out? Probably, and get yeah, that's out. probably what it is. Uh, put Rollins in a fair title match and he doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, look. The, I, 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 I disagree with that because Seth Rollins can perform in the ring. People just don't know. He can perform. However, the way that they're making the character look is that he's an undeserving champion and they're trying to get the fans to support Roman Reigns. That's that's what's going on. But believe me, don't be fooled. He may be running around like a chicken, but he can he can go. Believe me when I tell you. Okay, okay. All right, I just found something new on OBS. I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, let's see. Let's go to the menu and let's check some more stuff here. Uh, about the dark match, we'll probably look into that just for the, the hell of it, just to see what, what that is about. Surprised to see Orton do a T-bone suplex. Yeah, that was on, I think. What, yeah, I had a, I, yeah, 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 I had to address that. Um, let's see. Um, Teddy see. Long? <laughs> oh, man. I never forget when Teddy Long got abducted by The Undertaker and he was in the limousine. And, and Undertaker, like, um, what was it? The the mirror thing had rolled down and you see the mist come through. And he looked back, he's like, buckle up, Teddy. No! Dum, dum. He drew him off. <laughs> Me and Shit were, were bugging out, like, why would he do that? You know, but. Yeah, Teddy Long. I wonder where he is these days. We'll, we'll look He's him up. He's still in WWE, just doing a lot of background stuff. Apparently, let's see, Manny Davis said that. Yeah, I'm thinking that they're going to spin it and make him uh, take it back in the Elimination Chamber. Also, adding on to it, it's because the punk bitch PG era can't take a champ like him. Plus, it's only right to... Uh, I don't know what the hell that meant. So, bitch, st- stupid little Seth, and take his title back. Yeah, no, Seth is a phenomenal wrestler. Don't get it twisted. And Dean Ambrose has been fucking up in the Indies for years before they got pushed up. That is very true. It took him a very long time for Triple H to scout out the Shield, actually, and he actually brought all three of them onto board at the exact same time as a triple tag team. And that but- goes to show you, the CM Punk wasn't the mastermind. As you know, because Roman Reigns actually did a shoot on him. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like, yeah, CM Punk came up with the shield. All right, but like, oh shit, like mm, harsh words for for that man. So it is what it is. But um, yeah. oh, for those who are watching, make sure you check us out on NewGamingOrder.com, uh, where we talk about wrestling, video games, just guy stuff. You know what I mean? If you're down with the digital age, you know, uh, we're trying to do some more UFC stuff, but, you know, just haven't had the time and I, you know, got to spread around the interest and whatnot. But, you know, we're, we're an ever evolving variety gaming show. You know, make sure you support us, rate, comment, and subscribe for the YouTube. And, you know, again, it, it's a lot of activity, Nelson, tonight in the chat. So yeah. we, we really appreciate you guys. 
definitely. And like I said, we'll be trying to be doing a little bit more of the wrestling things because I know we said that we was going to bring on guests on the show. And I apologize to all the people that we have met that wanted to be on the, the show from Facebook and Twitter and also on Instagram. We're trying our best to get everything rendered. We just recently got a big push if that's the right word I can use within our production value so within the next week or so you're gonna start seeing a lot more content you know coming out mm-hmm. um, I want a fighting champ no Brock uh, to be honest I think a heel Cena will take it out of the PG era even if they have to find a new character to fill the kid spot Mm-hmm. And as we start to wrap up, um, you do know we're no longer in the PG era. We are in the reality yeah, era. Yeah, reality era. Which, uh, if, for those of you who don't know, is basically all the, the you know, re- a- anything that people really respond to. Like, for instance, a good example, the New Day. People don't like the New Day. So, okay, they're going to go with what the fans are reacting to, you know? So, in real time, Bam, you know, social media and all that. Like, we are in that quick response era, the reality era, as Triple H had uh, elected to when he was on Stone Cold's podcast. So, yeah, it's no longer a PG era, but it might still be censored. It's still not the, you know, bloody, barbaric stuff that we're used to, like, or, you know, ECW style. But, yeah, we are not in the PG era. I just want to let you guys know that. Mm-hmm. That is very true. It, it should be like the social era or something. I mean, they, they'll come up with something. Yeah, but it's it's definitely a lot that they can do within the WWE. They just have to stop letting some of the writers just go either too south or too north with their scripts. You know, WWE could definitely be a lot better. And again, in my opinion, NXT, TNA, OVW. They're doing it well, even internationally and in, in the Japan scene of wrestling. They know what the fuck they're doing. Some mm-hmm. of these wrestlers can cut loose, go ape shit, and it will bring in numbers like you will never see before. But Vince, Triple H, and Stephanie put these wrestlers in a safe mode, like on your computer, you know, when you boot it up and you hit safe mode and whatnot. No, no, no. Vince did that. Vince yeah. Did that. So he can protect all of the, the, the name brands and all the money that he'll be rolling in for these wrestlers. That's why you guys have several signature moves, several finishes that they can do, and they switch it up every now and then. Just like when Hideo Hatami broke out a character and within a dark match, he did the GTS, which he's the originator for. Mm-hmm. And then he never did it again. After that, when he was on NXT, and mind it, you, that was only in the dark match, though. Mm, okay, I mean it is what it is. But to bring it to a close, thank you, all of you who supported us in the chat, and even with it being like after midnight, you know we have that many people in the chat. We really appreciate that. New gaming order. We just got like a big support from a staff member and fans. So you're gonna see a lot of good stuff. Look at the overlays. Look at what Nelson is producing. And mm-hmm. soon, I'm, a, a lot of things. Only this has only been possible with you guys' support. You know, we're just hitting our stride. You know, and we're gonna only do bigger and better things. Make sure you check us out on NewGamingOrder.com. Check us out on Thursdays, our weekly podcast, uh, where we talk mainly about video games. And I might be switching myself to like Wednesdays to do like specials. Because, you know, me and Shinwar, you, you know, usually tackle different topics. But we're making this network grow. And, you know, the more support we get from you guys, the better it's going to be. You know? So, Nelson, any closing comments? Uh, yes, I would like to make a quick personal shout out to NYC Playboy. He... Like, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like, I'm a very transparent person when it comes to streaming. And my life is really all over the internet since 2008 when I was in Raw Gameplay. So I try to be honest with you guys as possible. During the time when I was in the hospital, when I got my appendicitis being taken out of my body from surgery, I broke down. And I thought this company was not going to go on any further due to, like, the -the behind-the-scenes stuff and whatnot. And honestly, Playboy, Playboy just... He fucking shattered my mind mentally to the point where how someone could be so generous and as the wording pay it forward, he brings that message to life. And he was able to get not only 
Mr. Alex Lessis, a fucking godlike streaming computer that he's now still setting up as we speak while we're the doing juggernaut. this podcast. It's, it's baby juggernaut right here. Baby juggernaut. Not only the C920 Logitech wide cam that I'm using right now, not only the green screen, the book bag, the gaming laptop. I mean, this man is like a fucking savior to the fucking new gaming order company. So again, man, shout outs to you. You keeping us alive as a new member and investor of the company. Wow. Yes. yes uh, I pray. I believe in the man upstairs. Thank you very much. It, 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 great, greatly appreciated. All right. So with that, uh, we are signing off. Yes. Uh, we we will have this on the website. And you know, on Facebook, we'll put I'll plaster it over Wrestle Zone, uh, Wrestling Inc., all those wrestling sites, and you know, hopefully, uh, they, they can appreciate it too. You know, just two guys giving their two cents. So, yep, two CEOs of New Gaming Order. We'll see you guys on our uh, weekly programming, and we're out like the Juggernaut, bitch. See y'all later. Peace. Peace.